welcome back to the Stella King Show. I'm your host, Miss Stella King, and we're back for another episode. I am literally so excited about today's show. I have an amazing and fantastic guest on set today, which some of you should already know about, and I'm going to introduce him now. Hi, Shola. How Hi, are Stella. you? Hello, so, Stella. this is Shola Egbale. Yeah, how are you? How's very, everything? Very, very well, Stella. Lovely. <laughs> Good. Good to be here. And basically, he's actually the CEO and the founder of Real Talk. And he also actually runs a show called The Real Talk. So, we're going to discuss a few things about what is Real Talk all about and what is it exactly he does. And really and truly, I really mean this, everybody. Whoever's watching out there, I'm telling you right now, you need to focus and listen to everything he says because I really feel that we can take something out of this, okay? Like, right, let's get back to him. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Shola. <laughs> Thanks, Stella. How are yeah. you? Very, very well. Okay. Well. So, when I first spoke to you, because obviously yep. I was introduced to you mm -hmm. by someone we both know, yep. and I, it was amazing to find out that actually we're probably somehow what related yes. because we come from the same, um, same literally area. town, like area where my family mm -hmm. was from. Exactly. So, which was amazing exactly. to know. Yep. Wow. So, it feels like I already know you. <laughs> that well, we family. have that connection. Family, family, yeah, family. family. Yeah. Um, so, what I want to first ask you is, what is Real Talk all mm. about? Yeah, sure. So, Real Talk's there. Real Talk Mentors. Yeah, we're CIC. Mm -hmm. um, we're literally a, what we call a bespoke or an asset-based mentoring service. Yeah. Um, started it up officially as a CIC two years ago, 2019. Did our first event in 2017. But prior to that, probably about 10 years prior to that, I was actually in the community, you know, working with young people, working with men mainly as a men's ministry leader. And so we got to see that a lot of the needs that were in um, a church environment were actually the real need in the community at large. Yeah. So we had to sort of come out and say, right, let's, let's now start to embrace the community. Now, Real Talk, funny enough, first, that it was actually born years and years ago, because a lot of it is actually based on my own um, life experience, okay. lived yeah. experiences personal experiences, and I've been able to bring it forward to um, basically ask young people, you know, what do you need? That's okay. the resounding question. One second, before we go into your story, yep. you just mentioned something. You said um, most of the things that you found that people outside actually needed was what you have already been teaching, basically, mm. in the church environment. Like, what kind of things was that? It was just being, it was just, the, 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 I would say more the need factor, um, okay. Stella. The whole thing, you see, people would, would go to a sort of church establishment, bricks and mortar, and, and believe that that is where, you know what I mean, those, those, those um, solutions could come from. Right. But we found that out in the community, the need was actually much more. Um, and it wasn't necessarily being catered for. You know, when something, I believe, when something, when something is sort of encased and wrapped up, in something else. It means that it's not being penetrated, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when we had, um, you know, the, all the di social disorder, violence, riots, remember the London riots a few years yeah. ago? Yeah, um, I remember that. <laughs> big issues, especially in Croydon. And um, the community, I feel, weren't really being, the issues weren't being dealt with. And so rather than sort of pen ourselves away in a church, in a building, you know, we came out onto the streets. We took a mm -hmm. camera out there and said, look, guys, what's, what's caused this? Why are you behaving like this was and, and you know we had young people with tears in their eyes saying listen we've wow. you know we've done what what society has asked us to do you know we've studied we've been, you know we've been humble we've done the right things and now we've come out and we've got no jobs and we're 20 30k in debt and you know people are pointing the finger at us young people and saying well look you guys are, are renegades and whatnot you know so there were so many issues that we could see that we thought right we need to now start to really tap in and get to the root cause mm -hmm. You know, uh, okay. the, you know, the foundational areas yeah. of what causes these issues. These issues, these problems, yeah. Because yeah. We, it's, it's another thing, what we do at Real Talk is that we don't skirt around all the, all the symptomatic stuff. You know, a lot of people, they, they hone in on that stuff. Knife crime, gun crime is not the problem. It's the thing that precipitates those yeah, things. Yeah, I absolutely agree yeah? to that. And, and, and that's where we go. That's where we go. Yeah. We go to deeper foundation. foundation yeah, I areas. actually feel like most of those issues, actually, there is a foundation mm. that actually needs to be dealt with. That's right. That we're just focusing on, okay, knife crime, gun exactly. crime. But what actually is the issue behind mm. it? Mm. And that's what needs to be resolved. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so we find that, we, you know, research and talking with young people, 
straight from the horse's mouth, adults as well, we find that it's, it's more of a self-esteem thing, Stella. We're getting to see it's more of a self-esteem, self-worth, lack of identity, you know, lack of being able to identify your purpose in life, you know, um, different traumas that can go way back, mm. you know, um, un have been un unaddressed. And so these things just bubble away, bubble away, and then they explode. Mm. Yeah, and we find that these, they're just not, they're not being addressed. Yeah. Is it a case of they're too painful? Is it a case of, look, we don't want to go there? You know, but it's a, it's a situation where we have to. Yeah. And that's what I believe sets us apart at Real Talk, because we go there, you know, as painful and as uh, murky as it can be, you know, we, we can't just be stirring up conversations um, generically. You know what yeah. I mean? We've got to go right to the core of the issue. And, Absolutely. Um, and this is what we do. So what we do to do that, so that we, we, you know, we run sort of three, three sessions, three platforms every week. So we have like a, a, a men's wellness platform. We have a women's wellness. And then we do um, a joint family one, looking at the family foundation and how wealth can be created in the family foundation. So we're giving young people and adults a chance as well to think, you know what, this wealth, not just about money, yeah, you're talking about your health, your welfare, your whole mindset is wealth. I feel that's quite different from what I've seen so far, because not only are you just focusing on the young people, mm. but you're also focusing, okay, on the parents as well. Yeah. Going back to the adults, like, because be just like you said, the roots, mm. we need to go back to the roots. And so that's very different from what I've seen, because everyone else just focuses, focuses normally just on that individual. Sure. But we got to remember that individual is going to be with you for a certain amount of time. Mm. And then if that individual now goes back to maybe, we don't know, their parents mm. or somewhere else, that also affects them. No, ma course. no matter what you believe or think, mm. you know, whatever you are around for too long yep. begins to affect you if there hasn't been a solid transformation. That's right. So, That's right. yeah, it's very impressive That's what right. you're doing. That's right. Yeah. And as you said, so look, you see, the thing is that the young people come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they came from a home somewhere. They came from an environment. And so we need to study what that environment is. What's the background of that environment? Yeah, to be able to get a clearer picture as to why um, a young person's maybe feeling a bit disjointed or out of sorts. Yeah, I mean, you'll find that generally there's something. There's something that's been maybe tucked away, something swept under the carpet, um, something that's not been put out there. And then, you know, a young person's sort of got this mindset and you don't know where, you see, so the sit down then has got to be, um, you know, bit, sort of bridging the communication gap, if you like, mm -hmm. between young people and adults. So we're talking about a mindset reset, not just amongst young people, but with, with, with us as well, with, with adults as well, to be honest. I'm going to say this, yeah, I know, so it, but I'm just like, yeah. basically, I just, like, I literally, just as I'm sitting here, I just could see, like, literally what you're doing and literally it's going to go far. Literally, it's really gonna go mm. far. I just saw it going. It's wider than what you could think, even mm. further than the UK. I literally just saw, like, literally, you put in a plan. There's a plan, mm. and I could just see that going. Yeah, it's gonna go well. No, well, thanks, it's thanks gonna go. That's, that's it's gonna go bigger than you even think than what you've planned. Well, I believe I'm waiting for that. I'm, <laughs> get, I'm getting all goosebumps as you said that now. Yeah, so literally, I was sitting there, I, I was feeling goosebumps. That. So I had yeah. to tell you that. Um, yeah, before going to, I just, so, yeah, let's get to your story. Let's get to your story. Ah, <laughs> where, where can I start? That's just like a blank canvas, isn't it? Um, well, so as I said before, look, Real Talk started, as I said, it was born many, many moons ago, many years ago. Um, um, I didn't know it at the time, obviously. Um, and the four words, simple words, what do you need? Okay, so that it was said to me, as I said, when I was young, I was about 17, no, I was, I was about 20. Um, my path had been a bit of, well, very rocky one, you know, I, I track it back a bit, look, born and brought up in the UK, both parents, sister, you know what I mean, 2.4 family sort of nucleus, both going to private schools, travelling to Nigeria every year, summer holes, loved it, couldn't wait, you know, normal household, you know, mum and dad working, doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and then there was a switch. Something happened. Went to Nigeria. Well, I was forced to Nigeria, put it that way. I was one of those, I'm sure you've, you've heard the stories of, of many of us that were hoisted back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're being so, naughty. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, I was, well, yeah, it was maybe in that category. But anyway, so we went back and um, I, um, I just rebelled, put it that way. I just switched. I thought, well, look, no, no one's listening to me. 
and this is again, this is what this is where you start to see the filter to real talk because I wasn't being listened to, I wasn't being heard, I was seen but not heard. Yeah, um, I knew what I wanted at the age of 16, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an ambassador, right? I wanted to work for the diplomatic corps, that's that was that was what I could see. Mm. And just to skip a few years on, I believe that look, we've gone full circle because I believe what, what, what I'm doing now, what God has allowed me to do now. It has an ambassadorial role in there. So we've come full circle, but it's taken so many um, events and circumstances, you know, for that to happen. So, as I said, being out there in Nigeria, just rebelled, just went off the rails. Um, you know, I've left home 17, 18. To leave home at that sort of age in Niger, in Lagos, is craziness. Okay, being from here, from away, as they say, right? And um, so I've hit the road, and I'm 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 an asset now. I'm an asset mm -hmm. to guys, roadman. I'm an asset because I've got this <laughs> lovely dulcet-toned English oh, an accent. Akata accent, <laughs> and they love it. Yeah, British, a British cool accent, and um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. I was just getting into different things, just getting into different crime, different fraud situations, whatever, just to make money. I'm, I'm desperate now. I've, I remember, I've left were home. You doing, were you doing that here or there? No, this is back home. This is back from home, that age, you were yeah, doing back that. home, yeah. And um, yeah, I got into a situation where, you know, um, <laughs> the end result was facing um, almost a firing squad. Um, because those days, if you were caught with either drugs or, or, or currency, it wasn't a jail term. It was it was it was cree cree, and then <laughs> and then the beach, the firing squad. Now I, I found myself in that situation. Um, ask me why I'm here to tell the story today. It's a long one, it's a long story, but I can give you snippets. Look, I can only say it's by the grace of God. Wait, so you went to Nigeria, mm. and but prior to this, you were in UK, you were going private school. Mm. You were actually okay. You were actually going private school in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means yeah. your parents were quite well off then. Yeah, so hard they could work, look they after hard you. Working, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hard yeah, working, yeah. they could look after you and give mm -hmm. you what you needed. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you go in, go to Nigeria, where your family's from, mm -hmm. and you start committing crimes, like fraud, and so on. And then you get you involved. See, yeah. Yeah. You see. It, How I mean, does that you happen? See, you see that? No, I'm glad you asked that because you, you can't really see the transition, can you? you see, and no. this is where this is where I said before, Stella. This is where the whole concept of real talk comes from because mm. it's not about so much what you have, what you believe that you have. Look. Young people always need, we always going to need guidance. It's not about projecting what. So if I said to you, Stella, okay, what do you want to do in life? And you say, right, well, I want to study this. And then it says, no, you have to study this. My thing was, no, you must, you must do law. You have to study law. This <laughs> is what you would do. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want to mm -hmm. do. There's no conversation now as to why that law should be studied. There's no, there's no discussion. It's there's just nothing what happening. they it's want. Like, it's, just it's, a, what, yeah. it's just an order. And you know, back in those days. That's how it was. As I said before, young people were just seen and not heard. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that was my case. And um, as I said, hoisted back to Nigeria. Um, and don't get me wrong, I loved, I loved my country. I loved my people. I, as I said, I was going back there every year for some holes. Couldn't wait. But now you've got me into a position now. I've started to form and mature in my mind. I've got certain things that I need to do and experience myself. But you're not, there's no opportunity. It's like, nope. You shut the door on that. And again, when we're trying to discuss it, it's like, no, forget it. You just spoil it. You don't know what you're talking about. Bang, boom, finish. And I'm like, ah. Now you've took me there on a false pretense. Okay, come, 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 let's go. Because when you get there then, okay, the thing you want to do, you know, we can, we can make it happen. But they took your passport at the age of 20. No, they didn't take, that's what I'm saying. We, we were just, I had to, it was, look, so it was a case of, if you don't go, and I'm, I'm saying this out now because I hope this is going to get beamed out, especially yeah. in our community. Yeah. It was a case of if you don't go, your mother may as well just get the return flight back to England. Wow. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, the family's finished. Wow. So now it's being put on me that if I don't come, if I don't oh follow God. the, if I so don't the line... Sorry, you felt like everything was on you. Well, it was not. It was like, listen, if you don't tow the wow. line, this is what's going to happen and you will be responsible for the fragmentation of this family. You must have been angry. Of course I was angry. Totally peed off to me. Yes. I was just wow. vexed. I was like, listen, so like I said, when I got there, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to show you something. Like, obviously not deliberate, but then you just get into things, the disrespect, 
you know, creeps in, you know what I mean, for, for, for your father and so forth, and you know, so-called elders who are not, nobody's sitting down, no one's listening, nobody's allowing that expression. And this is what I see, as I said, I'm flicking it forward, fast forward now to mm -hmm. Real Talk again, where we see these situations happening all the time. And then we wonder why young people rebel. We wonder why they flip out. It, these, these are some of the reasons. So, 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 yeah, so then we wonder why young people do what they do. I'm not saying that's the only reason. That was, that's my story. Because you asked the question, you couldn't see the correlation between, yeah. for example, being at private school, da 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 da, and then, and then that. Um, you know, my father was, you know, he was a hard working man, may you rest in peace. Um, very astute man, full of integrity. Also, you know our family name, you know what, what yeah. we're about in the community. Um, um, but there were, what I would say is that I never had a, I never sat down and had a conversation like this with my dad. Yeah, I know those. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so I as a man, totally. you, as a guy that needs to hear from my papa, I need to talk to you. Yeah. And there was just a barrier. It was just, I'm seeing you, I respect you as my father, but there's nothing. Wow. There's nothing. There's no linking. There's no, come son, let's go do this. There's nothing. Wow. Now I get to understand, I, I don't know if I can explain it away. I know he lost my, lost my grandfather. He lost his father from when he was 12 years old. And so maybe he didn't have a model then mm -hmm. to follow, to pay forward. Yeah. Yeah? So I now have a model. I know what my father did. So I'm able to do, I'm able to pay something forward to my children and to my granddaughter. And so I, I create that space. I create the arena for communication. Yeah. It all, it, communication is the key. Very vital. Absolutely. It's absolutely crucial. Yeah. Absolutely crucial. So there's no communication. It's like, well, things are just trotting along. You've mentioned private school, got this, yeah, they're hardworking, you know. <laughs> That's what, that all looks good. But what's going on inside? Mm. Right? What's going on inside the mind? Mm. Okay? Where's the motivation? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, doing what I do now, I know that I motivate my children. I've been from when they were born, all the time. I tell them I love them. I don't remember hearing those words. And I know when we say culture, bit of a funny play, play on that word, but again, it wasn't done. It's a case of, well, you should know that I love you because I've done all these things for you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got you this and I've got, I've you, got that. you that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, I'm going to hold you there for a second, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to be back. Yeah. And you're going to continue your story, okay? okay. No problem. So, guys, um, we're just about to have a quick break, but we'll be back shortly. Ooh, 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 ooh.